to my channel so today I'm going to be showing y'all how I prep to get ready to do my candy apples I have an order for 16 candy apples mini mouse and also 16 rice krispie treats and a two tier mini mouse cake so today is Saturday so I'm gonna let them sit out until early Monday morning so this is the process I prep for my candy apples so I'm gonna show y'all from the beginning to the end all right, so let's get started. All right, so here I have a bowl of boiling water and I also, no, a pot of boiling water, I'm sorry. And I have a bowl of cold water. And I also have my apple still in the bag. All right, so first thing I wanna do is take my apples out the bag. Make sure you're going to take all your stems off. And I just have my stove on medium high. And if you have enough apples, you want to try to pick the best looking apples, where the ones best that stands up the best. So, I'm taking all the stems off of one bag. So I'm gonna dip the, this bag first and then we get started on the second bag. And I've had a lot of questions on when you boil your apples, do they still be fresh? Yes, they still be fresh in the inside. This boiling your apples is just getting the wax off because the wax is what causes apple, I mean the bubbles when you get ready to dip your apples. So you in order to get pretty apples, pretty candy apples, you have to make sure that you get that wax off. If not, you're gonna have bubbles. It's just no way around it. All right, so two, four, six, eight, nine. So nine apples in that bag. And I'm gonna get started. So I'm just gonna dip my apples down in this hot boiling water. And I have a spoon here and I'm just gonna count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you want to make sure that you move your apples while they're in the water so that the whole apple gets in the hot water. All right, since my water is not that hot, I did leave them, I was trying to leave them in a little bit over ten. All right, so now I'm just going to take them out, and I'm just going to put them straight down in that cold water. And this is just cold water out the faucet. It doesn't have any ice or anything. some of this cold water out because I'm going to get ready to put the oven in there. I had a little bit too much. Alright. Just going to move them around in there. Alright, so now I'm going to put the last three out of that bag in here in the hot water. And we're just going to count to ten. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And also, 
if I was dipping these the same day, I would use ice water and let them just cool in the water until they cool off really, really, really well. But since I'm going to let them sit out, and that is the best way to do it. Let them apples sit out for at least 24, 48 hours. That's the best way to get some pretty candy apples. Because if you don't, you're going to get those little pinholes in your apples. They might look good right when you dip them, but you're going to get those pinholes in them after they sit for a while. Okay, so we so just got them out the cold water. And you see I just have lined them up on the towel. And this is just what they look like when they come out the cold water. And you see this white film, that's the wax. So you're going to make sure you get that off. But I'm going to let them sit out and I'm going to get that. I'm going to wipe them clean down before I get ready to dip them and make sure all that white wax is off. And it's going to be sap that comes out your apple. So you're going to see little white specks when they sit for 48 hours or 24 hours. You're going to see the white specks come out the apples. And that's the sap that's coming out your apples. And that also is caused the pin. That's what caused the pin bubbles. Where the pin, the little pin dots after you dip your apples, if you don't let them sit out, you get those little pin pin holes in your apples and you wonder what that is that's the sap that's coming out that didn't come out because you didn't let them sit for 24 you need to let them sit for 48 hours but if you have to you can do 24 hours so that's what that is so i'm gonna come back after 24 hours and i'm gonna let y'all see what they look like in 24 hours okay you guys i'm back it has been 48 hours since my apples have been sitting um yesterday i put my sticks and my straws in so what i do i boil them the next day i put my sticks and my straws and then the next day i dip okay so i'm just gonna let you see how they look after they have set out for their hours and this is how they're supposed to look but as i get close let me see can you see um you see some little dots that comes out the apples. And see that? You see those little dots? That's the sap that's coming out. So the process, when you let them sit out for the 48 hours, that's what you want to come out. Because if you don't, I don't know if you ever made any, but if you notice it gets the little pinholes, that's because you didn't let your apples, all the sap didn't come out. So you didn't let your apples sit long enough. So, today I'm going to dip in a few, but why I put my straws and sticks in on the second day is so the top can dry. Because, you know, when you when you pierce your apple, you get that juice that comes out. Well, you want that to dry before you dip your apples. Because if you don't, your apples will break down really quick at the top. If you notice, like, your apples... Uh, breaking down at the top and it starts usually from the top they'll start breaking down so you got to make sure that's really really dry down in there and yeah so this is what they look like but I still have to wipe them and get all of the wax in the sap off so once I wipe them they won't look as um, dull and they look better once I wipe them and get that sap and the wax off so I just wanted to show y'all, you know, what they look like before I clean them and dip them. That one has a lot of sap coming out. But yes, so you want to let them sit out in 48 hours. But if you have to, you can let them sit out 24 hours if you, you know, you really need them before the 48 hours. Okay, you guys, so I'll be back after I wash, well, after I clean these. And when I get ready to dip. Okay, you guys, I'm back. So, um, since I have so many apples, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to double my batch. So, I'm, I was going to do a whole batch, which is four cups of sugar. So, I'm going to double that to make it eight cups of sugar. So, that's eight cups of sugar. 
We're gonna do two cups of water. And I just double the batch to make sure I have enough because I don't want to have to go back and make more mixture. So I'd rather have enough than not enough. So that's two cups of that's eight cups of sugar, two cups of water, and then we're gonna do two cups of corn syrup. Put my eight cups of sugar, my two cups of water. Now I'm gonna do my two cups of corn syrup. Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna stir this up. This is a lot. Stir it up real good. And again, this is eight cups of sugar, two cups of water, and two cups of corn syrup. And I'm doing 20 medium-sized apples. So that's why I did, I doubled my batch. All right, and I'm gonna put my color in at the beginning because I have other stuff with this order, so I just want to go ahead and not have to worry about mixing my color in at the end and all that. So I'm just going to mix it in at the beginning. So when it's done, I can just dip. All right, so I'm about to go ahead and put my white in. I'm just gonna make sure I stir it up really, really good. Thank you. 
trying to achieve and it is better to put your color in at the beginning to achieve that color that you're trying to get I want a little darker than that And when it cook, it's gonna get a little bit darker than this. One more, a little bit more. Oh, I'm getting tired all this time. specks of color started in there. It's pretty pink. And if when it's finished, if it's not the color, if you, you can add a little bit at the end. But I try to achieve it at the beginning, so I don't have to mess with it as far as the coloring at the end. All right, so now I'm going to get a bowl of water so I can write down the um, inside of my pot, make sure all the sugar is off the sides. Then I'm going to turn my eye on, and we're going to let this reach 300. And then we're going to dip. Make sure I got all of it stirred up there. Just gonna take this water and wipe down the sides of my pot with that sugar just around the rim because that'll keep your candy from crystallizing. So you want to make sure you get all that sugar from around your rim. guys I'm about to get my thermometer and we're gonna let this cook until it reaches 300 degrees and then we will be ready to dip and while that's cooking I'm gonna start on my rice crispy treat gonna put it right here you want to make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom of your pot or you won't get an accurate reading 
All right. So now I'm just going to turn it on medium. High. Well, my stove has numbers, so I'm going to turn it on six. actually gonna turn it on five I gotta get used to this stove y'all it's a new stove for me so you could put it either at five or in between five and six so that's why I'm gonna put it in between five and six and I'm gonna let that get to 300 degrees and then I will return and we will start dipping okay we reached 300 degrees I took my mixture off I also added a half a gram of flavoring in at 275, and then I added a whole gram at um, when at 300 when it was done. So now I'm just stirring everything in, and we're gonna start dipping. I'm gonna wait on them bubbles to die down a little bit. Start dipping. All right, just gonna tip my pan to the side and dip. And I'm gonna set it on my silicone mat. up a little bit so I can see better. I'm just gonna shake that excess off. Be careful, it is hot.
silicone mat. Six more to go. Hey guys, that is the finished product. I'm about to box them and I will let y'all see how they look after I box them and decorate them. 